Research posters. Are they a genre, or are they a lifestyle? We might answer that question today in Research Posters, Designing for Impact. So, to think about research posters, imagine sharing your research as a PowerPoint presentation, just like this one. But now, you've only got one slide to use. What will you do? In this workshop, we're going to figure out what information belongs on your poster. We're going to learn some design principles you can use to make sure that images, text, and color are all serving your purpose. And we're going to find out how you can set up your poster to print successfully. So first, thinking about the parts of a research poster. Interestingly, the research poster itself is only one part of your research poster experience. So thinking about the poster, posters are usually presented at conferences and gatherings, and they can also be displayed in public for a long time. So because of that, a good poster is very eye-catching. People will notice it from far away and be intrigued enough to come towards it. A good poster also helps people gain one big idea from your research, so something you want them to take away from it and it makes it easy for people to ask you follow-up questions. So of course the poster was the obvious part, but you also have the pitch, which is your verbal presentation that goes along with the poster. A good pitch will really get people excited about your topic, and it's a chance for you to show off a little bit. So you can share your expertise and clarify big ideas for people, and it lets them have a chance to ask you more questions. So your pitch should make them more curious. And the final part of your entire research poster experience is the handout. So the handout is used to provide additional information. It's what audience members can take away with them and read whenever they feel like it. So a good handout is going to remind people of who you are and what your research was. It's going to give them extra information that didn't fit on the poster or was too complicated. And it provides additional resources for people who want to learn more about your topic or who want to follow up in some way. So let's see if that all made sense. So pretending that you yourself did a study on penguin populations, these boxes below list some things that might go on your research poster, or they might belong in the pitch, or they might belong in a handout. So based on your best guess, where do you think would be the best place for each of those components? Take a moment and pause this video and try and see if you can figure out where you would put these things. So in general, any non-essential details belong in the pitch and in the handout. Um, there can be arguments made one way or another for some of these items, but on your poster, you definitely, definitely want your thesis statement. You probably want to include that image of a penguin family uh, to add some visual interest and a place where people can have their eyes drawn to. Um, and you'll probably want your graph of penguin population growth since it's most likely part of your main idea. In the pitch, you might include the history of penguin research, if that's really interesting and might get people kind of revved up about your topic. And on the handout, you'd probably put your list of citations and a more complex results table that's not really visual or easy to determine what's going on at a glance. There are also some special considerations if you won't always be presenting your poster yourself, so maybe it's being displayed somewhere. Um, in those cases, what you can do is add info from the pitch to the handout. You can create a digital pitch to go with your poster and link to it. Um, or you can try making your poster more interactive uh, creatively by maybe making fold open portions or questions for your audience. Um, any kind of method like that will do some of the work to get what would normally belong in your pitch back onto your poster if needed. So now that we know what the different components of a research poster are, we want to figure out what actually belongs on that poster. And the answer is not very much at all. You do want to include some basic info on any research poster, such as an informative and engaging title to really get people revved up about your ideas. You want the sponsor of the research, so that might be Western Washington University. You want your name and the name of any other authors of the research. And you definitely want to include your contact information, both because people might want to ask you follow-up questions, but also because it's possible you could get offered a job. So don't prevent anyone from offering you a job by forgetting to put down your email or some other way to reach you.